Hello, this is Christian Idealism, and today we are going to be assessing the intermediate objections to idealism. This is, of course, brought to you by Cal Allender. So first, we have the first objection, which is the private mind's objection. So the argument is that if all is in consciousness, then we should all have the same mind. However, we all have private minds that are separate from each other. If all of reality is reducible to one universal consciousness, then we shouldn't have private separate minds. The problem with this objection is that it assumes that idealism is unable to explain private minds. Under idealism, private minds are disassociated aspects or alters of universal consciousness. Each alter is not able to go into the mental contents of another alter due to disassociation. And so this is the explanation of private minds. Then we have the standalone objection, which is that if all is in consciousness, then the world should not exist when not consciously observed, but it does. However, while one can make an argument from quantum mechanics that conscious observers are, ne are necessary to cause collapse of the wave function, and thus our perceptions don't exist until observed, there is actually a much easier way to respond to this objection. First, within alters, they can't put mental contents outside of their alter. In other words, we can't think things into existence and then somehow put those thoughts outside of our alter. There is a broader consciousness outside the alter's boundary, and the mental contents outside the altar remain external to it, but the altar can impinge to these external mental contents. This means that the world we see around us is the extrinsic appearance of consciousness that appears on the screen of our perceptions. As Bernard Kastrup himself writes, quote, The world is a perceptual representation of phenomenology, disassociated from our personal psyche and independent of our personal inner life. That which underlies the physical world we perceive continues to exist in the form of phenomenology outside our respective alters, even as we sleep. So that would be the explanation of our perception of the world. So now we have the shared world objection, which is that if all is in consciousness, then reality would be like a dream. But since dreams can only be experienced within one's mind, then we can't all be in, the sh in a shared world. However, since we are, then it's implausible that we are in a dream. However, this objection assumes that only bodies dream consciousness, rather than the other way around. Under idealism, it is the body that is in universal consciousness, not consciousness in the body. We share the same world because all of our alters and bodies are surrounded by the same universal consciousness. And so that is the explanation of our shared world. Then we have the next objection, which is the brain function objection. We know that head trauma and the use of drugs can highly change and influence one's conscious inner life. So the evidence prefers that there is something outside conscious inner life to be causing this inner life. We explained before, however, that private minds are disassociated alters of universal consciousness and that the world around us is the extrinsic appearance of universal consciousness. However, there is something that alters look like from a second point of view, and this would in fact be the brain. Since the brain is limited and has its own boundary, like alters, then it is the extrinsic, localized, disassociated aspect of universal consciousness. Outside all alter alters is the inanimate universe, which would include TVs and chairs, and this is why, since they don't have alters, then they don't have consciousness. And so any physical interference with the brain is the extrinsic appearance of mentality external to an alter that disrupts the inner experiences of the alter from a conscious boundary. To make it more intuitive, our thoughts always disrupt our emotions and vice versa on a daily basis. So for the same reason that thoughts disrupt emotions, physical interference with the brain disrupts and alters in our life and since all is mental, then this is what we should expect. So just as the universe is the extrinsic appearance of universal consciousness, so is the brain the extrinsic appearance of someone's inner life. And if all is in consciousness, then only mentality can interfere with mentality. So now finally we have the implausible cosmic life injection. So it's argued that it's implausible that the inanimate universe as it looks is the extrinsic appearance of conscious inner life. This objection I think once again appeals to intuition. However, there's an easy way to address this and I'm going to finish off this video with a really good quote by Bernardo Kastrup here in which he proposes an interesting thought experiment. So, here we go. Consider a living brain, exposed by surgeons during an operation. It is very concrete. It is a very concrete object that can be seen, touched, cut, categorized, etc. It is composed of the same types of atoms and force fields, 
that make up the universe as a whole. There is nothing magical about a brain insofar as we can god in the screen of our perception, and neither can we discern any intuitively appealing indicator of inner life by simply looking at an exposed brain. Nonetheless, we all know that behind the living brain lies the entire inner life of a person, with love affairs and heartbreaks, successes and disappointments, great adventures and quiet introspective insights, great joy and indescribable suffering. Behind that very concrete object, under the surgeon's scaffold, there lies a world of phenomenology. Counterintuitive or not, this is the way nature is. What we call physical structures, such as living brains, can correspond in some way to rich phenomenology. We may not know how this is so, but we do know that it is so. And so, just as the living brain may not look like that it has in your life, we do know that it does. So too, the universe, as it may not look like that it has in your life, we can infer that it very well may have inner life of its own and so that will be my video thank you for watching and have a nice day